Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the service of worship this morning. Uh, my name is Matt Schur. I've had the pleasure of worshiping with you in the past, and I'm uh, glad to be back. Uh, I am the uh, music director at uh, the Lutheran Center at UNL, uh, graduate of Luther Seminary, and full-time, I work as a case manager with uh, Family Service Lincoln, uh, working with people experiencing homelessness and uh, uh, that, uh, and helping them find homes and, and then working with them one-on-one -on -one to uh, help them be ready to be successful on their own. But uh, I, one of the great things about uh, being a music director at a campus ministry is that uh, during the summers, I get to come and visit places like this and, and uh, spend some time with you. So I'm, I'm glad to be here, and I hope that uh, this worship service is uh, fulfilling to your, your hearts and, and your souls. Um, there are announcements printed in the back of the bulletin. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to know which ones are more important than others. So uh, those of you with the ability to read, uh, feel free to check those out. But uh, are there any others that need to be brought forward this morning? Okay. Seeing none, let us uh, take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and shield. Our, our hearts are glad because, because we trust in God's holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Even in our faithlessness, God loves us still and waits in mercy to forgive. Trusting in the promises given at our baptism, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Holy God, you, you promise, promise us a life full of blessing, of blessing but, but we, we do not always believe. believe. You, you incite us to hope, hope but, but we, we fall, fall back into fear. fear. You, you urge us to give freely, but, but we cling to what we have. have. You call us to watch at all times for you, but we grow lazy and self-absorbed. Forgive us, increase our hope, enlarge our hearts, and keep us alert to the wonders you work in the world every day. For the sake of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I hear the good news. By faith we have been saved, our guilty hearts washed clean, revived, refreshed, and renewed, empowered by the Holy Spirit, live as ones who are forgiven and freed. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please rise as you're able in honor of Christ as we sing our gathering song. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a Thank you. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And peace, and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Mm-hmm. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I'm going to share a sign of that piece or be seated. <laughs> the first reading for this morning is from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be great. But Abraham said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue to be childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no, and Abraham said, You have given me no offspring, so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir, no one but your own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And, be, and he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it uh, to him as righteousness. Word of, Lord, word of God, word of life. Please read responsive with me, Psalm 33. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looked down, down from, from heaven, heaven and he sees, sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions, fashions the, hearts the hearts of them, of them all and, and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war, war horse, horse is, is a vain hope for victory, victory and, and by its, its great might, it cannot save. save. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our, our soul waits, waits for the Lord. Lord. He, he is, is our, our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, love o God, Lord, be, be upon us, us even, even as we hope in you. Alleluia, alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? gospel according to Luke chapter 12 verses 32 through 40. Jesus said, do not be afraid little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. 
Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And I see there are some children here. Uh, you are welcome to come forward if you want. All right. I'm going to grab this quick. Okay, now you have to tell me, where, where do you usually sit? Right there? Okay, go ahead and, and sit right there. And does Pastor Kim sit on the floor or on the step? On the step? Okay. All right. Uh, I'm not as young as I used to be. Okay, well, I've got my phone here, and there's a reason for that. I found a picture... And I want to see if you recognize this, if this looks familiar. Do you know what that is? That A what? A clown? Yep. And the clown? And the clown pops out his head. That's right. It's a jack-in-the-box. Yep, this is exactly the design of the jack-in-the-box I had when I was a kid. And it's why... Many people of my generation are very afraid of clowns. <laughs> if, you, if you all recognize the, uh, the, the Fisher Price Jack in the Box from the 70s, yes. Um, so, uh, but, uh, so what happens is, you know, he's inside the little box and you, you take this, this little lever and, and he, you spin it around and it plays and then yeah that's a great sound effect Pop! and he pops his head right out of there and i remember as a little kid i was like Whoa. um and then you push it back down and do it again so you can scare yourself again and, and uh supposedly it's a lot of fun um but uh, what, what we were reading in uh, the reading that we just heard really reminded me of that because it talks about how, um, how Jesus is like this, uh, like this person, the person who's in charge of, of a home, and he comes, he comes back at a time that uh, the people who are already there don't expect and so he says, if you're, if you're ready, if, if you've got the house all clean and everything, and, 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 uh, and, and the master comes home, he's like, oh, what a clean house. This is great. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad you did that. Um, but it's at a time that the, the people in the house don't really expect. And so we um, also need to be ready to, to see Jesus wherever, wherever we might find him. Now, we're not going to actually see Jesus with the beard and, and, and everything like we see in pictures, but we might see Jesus in the people who love us. We might see Jesus in the people that we try to help um, or the people who help us. And so if we're always ready to look, we will be like, like we're ready with the, the jack-in-the-box to, uh, 
to see Jesus wherever Jesus surprises us, except we won't be scared of Jesus, right? Yeah, all right. Okay, let's say a, a little prayer, okay? Dear God, thank you for coming to us in unexpected ways. Watch over us as we, uh, as we look for your face in everyone around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming up. You can go ahead on back to your seats. You know, the grown-up version of the Jack in the Box is the uh, Pillsbury uh, rolls that you wait, wait for it to pop. We just made homemade pizzas yesterday and we were talking about that. My friends in Christ, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Be like those waiting for their master to return. One reality of life is waiting. We, we do a lot of it. We're waiting for someone to show up, for something to happen, for things to change, waiting for a spouse to be done in the bathroom so you can leave. Another real reality of life is that a lot of us don't like waiting. We look for the shortest line at the grocery store and in the bank. When we approach a stoplight, we try to gauge which lane is going to be the fastest to go after the light turns green. We become impatient, even angry sometimes, waiting for a doctor or a waiter who's slow or inattentive. And, and look how we behave when the Coke machine is slow to deliver or the elevator is slow to begin moving. We start pushing buttons over and over and over until it finally does what we want it to do. Lots of buttons are pushed, both the machines and, and our own. Sometimes it seems like life is nothing more than waiting. As, as children, we wait for Christmas, summer vacation, and, and to grow up. As adults, we wait for school to start. We wait for just the right job, that special someone who will, wait our, uh, who will make our life complete, a promotion, retirement. Some people have to wait for the diagnosis, others for a cure. Some wait for the day that the pain will stop and the grief will end. Others wait for the answer to their prayers. Many of us wait for that time that we finally have enough money or enough freedom or the day that we will live happily ever after. People everywhere wait for healing a reconciliation and the resolution of conflict. Sometimes it, it seems as if the world has waited from the very beginning of creation for peace and the end of hu hunger and war and poverty. You now at some level, this waiting takes place every day. Each of us could name things or people for which we wait. Sometimes we live with this overwhelming feeling of waiting, but with no clear idea of exactly what it is we're waiting for. Now, when I look at my own waiting, I realize that I generally don't wait in the present. If you think about this, I either move into the past or the future. And the great tragedy in doing this is that I lose the present moment, and that's part of what makes the process of waiting so, so painful and, and so difficult. Well, what do I mean waiting in the future? Well, you know, waiting in the future often brings fear and anxiety about what's going to happen. We're haunted by the unknown, the lack of control. But at the same time, waiting in the past brings sadness or anger or guilt about things that have happened or the things that we have done or left undone. And as difficult as our present circumstances may be, that's the only place in which we can ever fully be alive. It's the only place where we can truly experience the presence of God. And when we move out of the present, 
whether it's to the future or the past. We not only postpone life, but we deny life. We deny our own resurrection. We desecrate the sacrament of the present moment. We have refused the gift of God's kingdom. Everyone, everywhere, in, in every age, waits. And Jesus did not eliminate waiting. If, if anything, it sounds just like the opposite. He tells the crowd, be like those who are waiting for their master to return. Now, today's gospel is not, however, about just letting time pass by. It's about presence. It's about being present. Jesus sees waiting as an act of faithfulness, the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, something active and alive. And so we're mistaken if we think that today's gospel describes an absent God, a God who left some time ago, a God uh, who, who just uh, let things start running and left. And we're equally mistaken if we think that we are waiting for a God who merely lives out into the future. Jesus is teaching us today how, <clears throat> excuse me, how and where to wait. He's inviting us to be present. When, when the one who is always present is here with us, he's inviting us to listen for the knock, to watch, and to be alert. And he's inviting us in the present to see the reality of God in one another and in the world and in ourselves. This is the God who is present in the ordinary circumstances of our lives, even in our waiting. And we might be tempted to ask, where is God in all of our waiting? But maybe the better question is, where are we. And when I was in college about a thousand years ago, I was a counselor out at Camp Carol Joy Halling near Ashland. Now, each night before the kids went to sleep, we had a, a devotion time. And one of my favorite questions to ask to, to begin it, and, and usually there would be answers enough to, uh, to end it right there, was, where did you see Jesus today? I still remember one very surprised and excited third grader who was still in that concrete level of thinking that cried out, wait, you mean he was here today? Jesus responds to our excitement and our surprise by saying, yeah, 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 I was here. I am here and I will be here. And so he says, be dressed for action. Something is going on right now, right here. And I want you to be a part of it. I want you to participate in it, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is for you, and you can only fully receive it when you are looking for it, when you are actively waiting for it. Have your lamps lit, he says. There is something to see. Move out of the darkness. Come into the light. See what is right in front of you, what is all around you, and what is within you. For the Creator wants you to have the kingdom. The Creator wants you to have the kingdom, to experience the kingdom, to live in the kingdom right here and right now to live, have life, and to have it fully and to the utmost. Be alert, he commands. Now, this isn't some sort of threat. This isn't a veiled threat. There's no punishment involved here. I, I love it. it. It goes straight from this... Uh, this exhortation to be alert straight into this example of, of the, uh, the, the master uh, not knowing when the thief was going to break in. There is no condemnation. Oh, if, if you're not alert, you know, then I'm going to rain down hellfire on you. No, this is be alert because I want you to have the life 
that I am giving you and to have it to the fullest. This is an invitation to be blessed. Blessed are those whom he finds alert. <clears throat> Jesus isn't just inviting us to be awake, to be ready, and to be watchful. He's calling us to be fully alive and to remain alive. Blessing and life are synonymous in God's kingdom. It's as if Jesus is saying to us, be alert, be blessed. And when you are ready, you will be able to see that I am here to serve you. I am here to feed you the bread of life. I will serve you the cup of salvation. All of this, Jesus says, happens at an unexpected hour. Like a thief in the night, the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. And so that begs the question, when is this unexpected hour? When will all of this happen? My guess is that for most of us, maybe all of us, the most unexpected hour is right now, today, right here. When it's us out in the world about our daily lives, whether it's at work or at school, in our homes, just like it was for that excited camper. The most unexpected hour is the hour spent in the hospital waiting room, or the hour sitting next to the phone waiting for news of a loved one, the hour praying for the miracle, an hour that we wait for, for clarity and a way forward, the hour waiting for grief to end and life to return to normal, the hour in which it seems that nothing is happening, life is not the way we want, and there's nowhere to go. It's the hour in which we are downtown and we see that one guy flying the sign who we have always seen in front of, in front of the theater or in front of a, a, a certain restaurant. And we look at that person in the eyes and we see not just some random, uh, some random invisible person, but we see the face of God God's self. We see the face of Jesus. It's when we look at each other and we see each other's needs and we see each other in our own brokenness. And in that, we see the presence of God. The unexpected hour is right here, right now, if you are ready, if you are looking for it, if you are prepared. I mean, you mean he was here today? He was, he was right here, and, and I missed him? No, you didn't miss him, third grade camper. You didn't miss him, people here in the pews. You didn't miss him, Matt. You didn't miss him, uh, those of you out in the world, because he was among you. He is among you. He will continue to be among you right in the most unexpected hour of your life. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join together in our hymn of the day, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. I say
submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, helpless on my side, angels descending, ring on above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, perfect submission, all is at rest, I in my Savior. Let us join together in confessing our faith in the God who is with us in our waiting uh, through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, and the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you for your presence among us. We thank you for your presence in the face of those around us. We thank you for your presence in our waiting, and we ask that you bless us that uh, we, we may see this time of waiting, whatever it might be, as an opportunity to fully experience you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we thank you for giving us this creation to steward. We ask that uh, you bring rain where it is needed, where you bring sun where it is needed, where you bless those who tend the fields and provide our food. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wholeness, we remember those among us who are sick either in mind, body, or spirit. You are the great healer, and we ask that you you lay your healing hands on those that we now name before you, either aloud or in our hearts. May your presence be with those who, who we have named and all of those who are in need of your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, there is so much conflict in, in our world. We ask that you bring your peace to those places that are suffering from the effects of war, for those places that are suffering from the effects of, of discrimination and injustice. Help us 
be bringers of your justice wherever we might find those opportunities to do so. Keep our eyes open for those opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope. We lose loved ones, but we do not grieve as those who have no hope. We remember the promise of the cross and the empty tomb, the promise that comes with the resurrection. Be with those and grant those who mourn the loss of loved ones, the peace and the hope that only you can bring. And for those who are waiting, who are looking forward either with, with fear, with that hope, with longing, or with grieving ahead of time, bring your peace to all of those as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for those who we pray, trusting in your mercy, through God, our Father and Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God. We, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and praise. praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and you call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. And now may the God of peace Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. We join in our sending hymn, How Great Thou Art. <laughs> Yeah. 
sings my song, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my song, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art. Make us watchful, dear God, for all that you are doing in the world. Keep us faithful, Holy Spirit, that we may do your will in all things. Hold us in your grace, Lord Christ, as we seek to do the same for all we meet. Go in peace. Live in love just as Christ loves us. We go to serve reaching out, sharing grace. Thanks be to God.